All right. I'd like to welcome everybody to the February 1st Bolali Municipal Advisory Council uh, meeting. Uh, call to order. Our secretary will take the roll call. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'll start to my right. Jungling. Here. Evans. Here. Yes. Here. Mayor. Here, in person this time. We like Welcome that. back. Me too. Finley. Here. And just to report for the record, we have uh, both our alternate, Zachary Hayward, and our council member, Dan Lewis, are out for personal reasons. Um, so that concludes our roll call for the evening. All of you received a copy of the agenda? Yeah. Uh, are there any changes, additions? If not, we'll entertain a motion. Dave? I need to <clears throat> add a, another permit application, a referral uh, to item number eight. I'll briefly read it for the record. Again, this is, we can choose to act or not today, but this is a uh, boundary line adjustment 2023-0037 submitted by Bill Fife. It's a coastal boundary line adjustment to merge two existing lots, uh, one being 1.69 acres and the other being 0 0.93 acres to create a 1.69 acre lot. There's no development proposed as part of the, uh, the, the merger. Uh, that That is the extent of, of the application. Okay, and that'll be 8.3. Okay. I also have to note um, an additional item of correspondence in the list of CDF items regarding timber harvest plans and amendments. You need to add a uh, an item January 25, 2024 to the list. Okay. Any other additions? Hearing none, we'll, I'll entertain a motion to accept the agenda as amended. I move we accept the agenda um, as movement, amended. Movement by Don. Do we have a second? A second. Second by Henry. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay, the... I was looking at the... Uh, December minutes, as I transcribed them from our audio. And I do see that uh, the November 2nd minutes were approved. They were motioned by Henry Mayor and a second by Melissa. Oh, I'm sorry, to table the minutes to January 24th. Um, November 2nd minutes. Uh, any comments? If not, I'll entertain a motion of, of the minutes of November 2nd, 2023. Robert? Uh, motion that we approve those minutes. Motion by Robert. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Don. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Hearing none. Uh, motion carried. Uh, approval of the minutes. December 7th minutes. Uh, there are two changes that uh, I'd like to point out. I did put a copy of it on your table. I'd like to thank uh, uh, Council Member Finley for catching the correct word of role. It's R-O-L-E rather than R-O-L-L -L under um, Nine. I 9B. So that correction. And the other one was uh, Henry added an explanation for uh, going remotely. Do you want to read that again for the record or are we fine just adding your? Yeah, I, I just changed it from remotely to remotely comma for reason of contagious illness. Um, uh, and that's just, um, we need to explain um, at the meeting why we're attending remotely to follow the Brown Act. Uh, and are limited to a certain number of just cause, which is what this one is, um, or emergency. Um, and so I think just having it listed will um, make it easier for us to keep track of that 
going forward. And also, I think it's appropriate to have that be in the minutes. Okay. Any other additions, corrections, Robert? Yeah, Mr. Chair. Um, under under the GCAP committee, um, it's it's kind of brief. I think it should include something to the effect that um, Robert was in contact with County Council and had been in, in communication regarding a potential conflict of interest matter. Okay, that'll be. Uh, we will add that as items. Bullet or number three. And uh, we will go ahead and add that, uh, that you've been in contact with county council regarding yeah, it's potential just... conflict of interest. Uh, I, uh, if we're going to vote to approve, we should probably have specific verbiage, right? Uh, pardon me? If, if we're going to move to approve these minutes, we should probably know specifically what the language is going to be. Uh, is that right? Would you like me to recommend some language, Robert? Fine. Okay, and write them. I, I, Robert reported he is in contact with County Council regarding potential conflict of interest. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, with those amendments. I have another amendment. Oh, you do? Go ahead. I apologize. Uh, under GCAP committee, I have a correction for item I. Uh, here is the correction verbatim. Reported MCOG will request $1.2 million from the State Transportation Improvement Program to match Caltrans contribution to close downtown Willow enhancement funding gap, funding to enhance the Mountain View Rehabilitation Project will also be part of the MCOG request. That is to replace the language there. In item I? Correct. Okay. Uh, any questions on that or everybody fine? Good with okay. that. Uh, if everybody's fine with that, uh, I'll take a, entertain a motion to approve the minutes of December 7th, 2023. Uh, approve. We have a motion by Henry. Do I have a second? Second by Robert. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Carried. Uh, next one, uh, all of you should have received the January 4th, 2024 minutes. Um, if, are there any changes to that? If not, then I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes as submitted. Um, I did a couple things on this. Um, so the first one was similar, uh, a similar request to say via Zoom, comma, for reason of contagious illness. Okay. Um, uh, for the same reason I said before. Uh, any, any objection? Um, and then the other thing was more of a sort of a broader question. It's not exactly a proposed amendment. Um, these minutes felt pretty verbose to me. Um, like there was quite a bit of sort of what this person was saying, what that person was saying. Um, and I know we've discussed the minutes somewhat before. Um, it's not a huge thing for me, but this felt like too much and like it created created space for contention that wasn't necessary um, to sum up what happened at the meeting. Mm -hmm. I don't know if others agree, disagree, want to talk about it, don't want to talk about it. You know, this, did you get this earlier? Did you get a copy of this set of minutes earlier? The copy earlier? Uh, the copy minutes distributed earlier to you? Uh, I, I have them um, from uh, January 29th. Okay. It, January 29th. Uh -huh. When did you receive the draft January 4 minutes? That uh, That's when I received them? It's the 29th. Okay. Uh, my question to you is if you've got an issue with these, um, is there any reason why you didn't respond in uh, writing to facilitate whatever changes might be made? In a timely manner tonight. Yeah, so I um I responded on the first one um about uh, adding the um, for reason of contagious illness. I didn't respond about um, the verbosity of the minutes because I thought that was appropriate for council discussion mm -hmm. rather than something that should be addressed um, outside of open session. I, I didn't think that could be resolved without discussion. Um, 
So it didn't seem worth uh, just sending an email. It wasn't it wasn't a correction. It was a topic. May I make a, a suggestion uh, at the council's pleasure that uh, uh, we move on these, whether we accept them or not, and that we definitely have a discussion on what we feel is appropriate format for our minutes, because I know there's been a lot of discussion on that regarding action minutes, uh, semi-action minutes, or uh, fully verbal minutes with, with everybody's comments. Um, I think that'd be appropriate to talk about at a, on a separate item. Yeah. Um, so if everyone is fine with having that discussion, Robert? Um, as a follow-up to the last meeting minutes from December 7th, I, I don't totally agree with what's intended here under GCAP. You, you, um, the meeting minutes say that um, I was asked if I received any communications regarding conflict of interest, which we are really going to know. Um, I think it should summarize and say that, you know, there's been addition, there had been no additional correspondence um, with county council. This is verbatim off the recording. Right. That was what I was referring to, what I was commenting on, that there had been nothing additional that I had had to come over correspondence with um, with county council mm -hmm. based upon what we discussed in in the prior month. So that should that no should either be qualified or it should be something should be said there that um, you only responded no to the fact that there has been no further communication with county council on the matter. It's Robert. I appreciate the um, <clears throat> you you're expounding on on this issue at this time. However, the record as recorded did not include any of that additional uh, course uh, conversation. We didn't do it. Uh, this is pretty verbatim. Essentially, Kevin asked if you'd received any communications regarding conflict and you responded simply, no, that's it. You can listen to the recording if you like. Um, I'm not in favor of embellishment after the fact well, as a matter of, of a matter of practice. This is just to clarify sure. why I was saying no. This is this is, has to be reflected accurately in the minutes. I feel the so, minutes are accurate according to the recording. Yeah, we don't embellish. And, and in that, retrospect, is it that you want to hang something on me that I didn't that I didn't that I'm lying to you no. that I didn't receive correspondence or what is it? No, this is just. Well, I'm, I'm I'm not trying to sure doubt that i said no i did say no but that was the intent of why i said no is because we had just talked about it okay. in prior month okay and i was in communication and this was an ongoing thing so i, I want to make that clear um it's just well uh, be before i weigh in um are there any other council members that have a comment on on the minutes okay um, once again, this is another reason why we're just looking at action minutes. And if anybody wants to hear the explanations of why uh, we we vote yes or we vote no, um, they have the ability to look on the website to see it uh, uh, verbatim. And I think this is yet another case where we're trying to uh, navigate our, our minutes from Mary's very detailed minutes to trans transfer to more of an action minute. So if your comment is not indicated in here, Robert, I, I respectfully understand that. Uh, if anybody wants to see your recommendation or your further comment, they can look on the website. Um, and this is one of the things that we're going to have to work through is making sure that our minutes are, you know, to address Henry's concerns and, uh, and to address Robert's concerns. And that's why we're engaging the council in a discussion. But these minutes right now are minutes taken from the meeting itself. Right. Um, so, um, we can, what we'll do is we will, uh, is there an action on the minutes? If there aren't, then, uh, 
Well, we, we can move forward. Again, I'd like to say that it seems a little, I would say, verbiose, the yeah. minutes in that section. I would suggest you maybe stick with the subject matter of, of this and maybe start it with Shabak respond, report of Calibrands. That's the action item. That's what happened. The, the, the two initial sentences, um, that's something that was already handled at the prior meeting. Okay, to not drag the meeting, uh, is there a motion to accept the minutes of January 4th? So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Okay, I'll second it for for discussion and a vote. Uh, yeah, I'll just say, I, I think that it might be appropriate to table these minutes um, and then uh, come back with a less verbose treatment and come back since there is, I, I would be, if there were no conflict with the, with the minutes themselves, I would say hunt on that question till a future time. But since there is conflict and it's easily resolvable by simply reducing the amount right. of stuff that we're saying, I think it might make sense to table, do that. Well, let's, let's do this. Oh, we, have, we have a motion and a second. Yeah. Let's act on that. If it fails, then you can introduce your yeah. table. Um, we'll do a roll call. Robert? No. No? Dave? Yes. Don? No. Henry? Nope. Melissa? No. Okay, it fails. So uh, we will entertain a separate... Uh, did you vote? Bring anything up for no. Public comment, but... Yeah. We will right. entertain a separate motion. Uh, I'll move to table these uh, and come back with a shorter fourth. People, we have a motion by Henry, a second by Don to table the January 4th minutes. We will take a roll call vote. Melissa? We're voting to table the January 4th minutes. What's we that? To table them. To, to table them. So, so next month. Not oh, act on that. Oh, right. I vote. Oh, yeah. Okay. Henry? Aye. Don? Aye. Dave? No. Robert? Aye. Kevin a vote? No. Okay. For that. So it's tabled till the January 4th meeting. Passes 4 2. To Melissa? To the yeah. January, to which? I meeting? mean, till the, uh, till the uh, March meeting. Sorry. I like that we keep that assistance if I may. Just a, a point of order. A point of order. Yes. Content of the minutes according to Robert's rules of order. In, the, in an ordinary society, the minutes should contain mainly a record of what was done at the meeting, not what was said by the members. The minutes must never reflect the secretary's opinion, favorable or otherwise, on anything said or done. Mostly it was the first one. Anyway, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Thanks. And that's what that's what we are going to be just talking about as a council is uh, the direction on how we want to handle our minutes. Um, Dave, we should have done this under agenda approval, but the item slipped my mind. <clears throat> Apologize. Can we revisit the agenda one more time? We do have minutes from our special meeting on the twenty third, right. and I failed. I apologize to add them here. Can we just do it next month? Or yeah, because we did not post these, um, we will go ahead and carry these over to our March meeting. Um, they were posted on the website, but you're right; they're not on the agenda. Um, everybody fine with? Uh, yes. Yeah, with I don't think we can take formal action. Right. Okay. Or, uh, <clears throat> correspondence. Our secretary can report on that. Uh, I have nothing to add other than what's reflected in the agenda. Okay. Any comments or questions? None. Okay. Public comment on non-agenda items. A maximum of three minutes is reserved for members of the public to address the Walla Municipal Advisory Council on the items not listed on the agenda. The total public input on a particular issue is limited to 20 minutes. Government Code 54954-3, the 
The council is prohibited from discussing or acting on matters not on the agenda, but briefly may respond or ask questions for clarification according to government code 54954-2. I know we have a couple people in the audience. Uh, is there any, oh, we'll get to you. <laughs> is there any anyone, uh, Pat or John? Any comments? A lot that I could say, but no. Okay. Moving on. I guess now you have a speaking part. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Deputy Michael Jensen to give our uh, law enforcement report. I don't see the sheriff. Uh, I've been in correspondence with the sheriff. He's having trouble getting some cell service to be able to attend the Zoom. Uh, he let me know. Uh, Right now, he's currently working with uh, Caltrans and County Department of Transportation and other allied agencies just to make sure we have contingency plans if there's any other flooding that as part of the storm and trees down and road closures in the moment. Um, so within this past month, uh, as I had played you guys know, I haven't been here for the last week. I've been actually out of the country. Um, this past month, there's been numerous investigations, uh, continuing the investigation regarding the shooting that happened just north of town, uh, along with the burglaries, that uh, there's been some suspects interviewed on that as well. And then also physical evidence was found and sent to the Department of Justice to be tested and see if we can get any sort of viable results off of that. Uh, Regarding the fire that I was informed of that happened over up here on Old Stage, uh, that's still under investigation as well. There's some evidence a uh, subject was arrested on a felony warrant and he is still currently housed in custody as well. So there's some work that went on just to make sure that we can get, get everything we need to do to submit that case to the DA for prosecution regarding any of the fires as well. So, and if anyone has any questions, please ask. And like I tell everybody, um, please, if you have any sort of public concerns or you haven't been getting a hold of anyone, please send me an email or contact me. Uh, that's the only way I'm gonna be able to know if something's going on. Uh, after being gone for the last week and a half, I have yet to receive one single email from anyone within the Southern Coastal communities of any issues. So if I don't get anything, there's not no way I can know. I don't have a crystal ball, but please contact me and let me know so I can address your issues in a timely manner and we can get things right up. Any questions, uh, Henry? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. You said uh, physical evidence was gathered. Was that... Uh with regard to the shooting or to the burglaries? So to, to the to the burglaries okay. um, uh, regarding the Chevron burglaries and the wall mm -hmm. building supply of burglaries. Uh, regarding the shooting, there's still search warrants that are being written uh -huh. as well. Um, and as soon as I I have to make it up to a judge and I'll make have him review those and then hopefully be executing those search warrants this week. Thank you. Okay, any other comments or questions? Um, just to let you know what I've heard from the public. They've really appreciated your response time. And I know that some of the, uh, uh, I guess, websites have indicated differently, but we thank you for, for being here when we need you and uh, appreciate all that you and the sheriff are doing for our, our community. So thank you. Here, here. Any other comments, questions? Go, John. I just wondered. Um, there was a suspect that you said was was under arrest. Was that the suspect for the arson fire? Uh, yes. Okay. What's your track number? So the the best way to get a hold of me is the contact non emergency dispatch at seven zero seven four six three four zero eight six extension zero for non emergency dispatch. And you can always request the resident deputy uh, respond or the resident deputy contact you. That way, an email will immediately be sent to me. Um, and if 
I am not working and someone requests the resident deputy to respond, the supervisor will be notified and then it'll be routed through them and they'll approve if I'm not working at that moment. But sure. uh, best, best way to get a hold of me, especially as GMAC knows and a lot of other people, is if you send me an email, all our emails are tracked, they're mm -hmm. traced, and it puts a solidified document there, you know, show up there. Great. Any other comments, questions? Thank you and stay safe. Yeah, yeah. Thank you much and welcome back. Yeah. Okay, under old business discussion or action, uh, item 7.1, will all the municipal advisory council bylaws update. Um, before we start, I would like to thank the committee of Melissa, Henry and Robert for taking on the task of uh, updating our bylaws. It, uh, it's been a lot of time and we appreciate uh, your editing, your input and your direction on that. And uh, also the guidance you gave on the January 23rd meeting where we hammered out uh, probably 90% of uh, the document. So I would like to thank you for your time and efforts on that. Uh, at this time, I'll turn it over to the committee. I don't know who's going to be the spokesperson, but uh, uh, if you could let us know where we're at right now and where we need to proceed in March. Um, likely, likely Henry would be the spokesperson. Great. Um, so uh, we've got um, just if there are a few changes from uh, where we stood at the end of the last meeting. Um, the simplest one is in. Um, uh, or sorry, these are a few changes actually from what I sent out most recently. Um, and then there's one big change. On this document that I'm just saying? Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, so I think um, in section 511, this is the simplest one. Um, if you would mind scrolling. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, actually, no, never mind. This was a change that was not discussed, but is in the document, which is um, uh, when, when we last met, it said um, computer connection or other technology may be provided as reasonably practical, practicable, or uh, electronic attendance dot, 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 may be provided. And I just changed it to supported because I thought that was grammatically more correct. Well, you, made this, you made this change. Right? Exactly. I just changed that from provided to supported. Uh, yeah. Because it's electronic attendance may be supported. Uh, that one's very minor. Uh, then um, there was one uh, change from uh that um we had discussed but i had missed um and wasn't in the um document that i sent out um which is uh in 5.10 yes thank you and 5.10 um it was to clarify that um, you can only uh request reconsideration if you were on the prevailing song um, which is standard Robert's Rules of Order. So uh, it's a sentence added to the very end, which is a motion to reconsider may only be moved by a member who voted with the prevailing side on the original action. Yeah. Sounds good. Great. Um, so those those were two relatively minor ones. And then bigger change um, from where we last discussed was... Um, that the committee met and um, continued discussion on revision of the bylaws. Um, there was a little bit of added information brought into that meeting, um, primarily, most importantly, about Robert's Rules of Order and standard way of doing things. Um, we took a vote um, in view of the fact that it was a straw poll um, that we had at the last meeting rather than formal instructions to the committee. Um, there, uh, you know, was not. There was there's there was no binding instruction to the committee, uh, so that we took a vote, uh, and the majority of the committee voted to retain the two thirds majority language instead of changing it to simple majority. And the reason, I'm sorry, the reason for doing that was what? The reason for retain for uh, taking the vote or for how people voted? No, for not 
going along with what the consensus had, you, had indicated at the 23rd meeting, but uh, an independent vote to change. Yeah, so um, the reason why um, I at least felt there was space for a vote was because it had been a straw poll uh, rather than a formal instruction. Um, I should apologize at the outset. Uh, I gave every impression um, at that meeting that I would be returning a draft with simple majority as was my intention, but I spoke out of turn. That was not a decision for me to make. That was ultimately a decision for the committee to make. And so the majority vote of the committee was to retain the two thirds language. So I apologize for um, the fact that in that last meeting, I said, okay, we'll return a draft with simple majority. That was not my place to make that decision. Okay. Uh, returning the draft is a committee action. Any comments from the other committee members? And I, I do think we should we should discuss the right. I, what I wanted to see first is if there's any any yeah. other further comments from the committee, and if not, then I'll open it up to the public. Does the public have any comments on the bylaws? Okay, say none. We close public comment. Bring it back to the council for discussion. <laughs> This is section 701. Um, anybody want to jump in? Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I saw a hand from Melissa. Great. I would like to read from Robert Jules of order. Order. Singular. The bylaw should always be prescribed, should always prescribe the procedure for their amendment and such provisions should always require respect. Advance notice be given in a specified manner and that they meant to be approved by two thirds of vote. That's 56.50. This is 57.51, subsection one. Okay. Special requirements for this motion adoption. Amendment bylaws should be specified in the bylaw, and they should always include at least notice and two thirds of vote. Okay. Uh, any other comments from the or any comments from council? Uh, oh, sorry, I do have one more comment. Oh, okay, go comment? ahead. No, um, go ahead. Uh, so uh, in addition to um, the fact that Robert's rules advises a minimum two thirds vote, and that is the current one, um, I found uh, that, and that's what we currently have, um, I found that personally relatively convincing. Um, I would add one other difference since uh, um, uh, David had brought up the way various legislative bodies handle it with a simple majority to approve rules. There is, I think, a very key difference. Um, the rules by which, for example, the House or Senate operate don't persist between sessions or between Congresses. So one Congress cannot bind a future Congress cannot pass rules that bind a future Congress. Uh, those rules are a blank slate at the beginning of each one. Uh, that's not the case with us. Uh, the bylaws persist until they are affirmatively changed. And so um, I do not in any way think that this would happen. But when thinking about what the rules by which we operate should be, I try to think holistically about what could happen. Um, and so, for example, with a majority vote on the bylaws, you could have a majority vote to um, change the way roles and responsibilities are distributed and change it to a unanimous vote to change the bylaws in the future, thereby allowing a simple majority, not just to push through changes, but to lock those changes in, such that even if it were to lose the majority, it would maintain those changes. So, for example, if a chair with a simple majority, and again, I do not... I, I, I do not see any risk of this happening. I'm just saying, in theory, it could. Uh, a chair with a simple majority could pull as much authority as possible into the chair, change the bylaws to be a unanimous change, uh, to require unanimity to change them, and then thereby lock that power in, even if the majority changed. So because our bylaws do bind future versions of ourselves, I think it's appropriate to require a higher standard for changing them than just a simple majority. There's a difference between legislative bodies. 
Okay, any any other comments from council? Chair. Go ahead, Don. Um, yeah, you know, during the straw vote, uh, I did vote for, for majority rule in terms of changing uh, bylaws. However, um, I, I think I'm convinced now that, that we should probably uh, stick with the two thirds, which is what we have been operating under, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I really don't see any particular need to change bylaws on a frequent basis. So it's relatively infrequent when there's a real need for it. And in that case, it's likely you're going to get a two thirds majority uh, to change the bylaws like we're doing right now. Um, because it's been a number of years. Uh, and the fact that Robert's Rules of Order uh, recommends two thirds majority. And yes, we are not an institution like Congress. Uh, if Congress had a rule like this, bylaws would never ever change, ever, uh, or their rules of operation. So clearly in the case of Congress, it, it has to be just a majority vote. So uh, I would favor a two thirds vote. Okay. Yeah. The behavior of the committee is emblematic of the need to change this provision. This group conducts itself ideally in a congenial and respectful manner. And a congenial and respectful manner is at times reflected by voting and adherence to votes in good faith. Uh, there is nothing about receiving direction on the 23rd that would have precluded this conversation happening just like this in a very different way. Uh, but instead, a committee of three people who happen to be generally opposed to many of the changes in the bylaws, if not the beginning, the whole beginning of this uh, exercise, inherently opposed, uh, chose it upon themselves to overrule direction from the majority of the council, which to me is emblematic in and of itself of the risk of having the minority rule over everybody else. Uh, I find the speculation regarding the risks of unanimous uh, voting requirements to be unnecessary and specious. Uh, not compelling at all. Uh, the fundamental differences between GMAC and the Congress or the county or a district that has the authority to tax and bind legally its constituents is stark. The purpose of GMAC is not to get entangled by uh, unnecessary manipulation by one or two voices, but in fact, to invite as many voices as possible. And that in and of itself is fundamentally related to a majority rule condition where necessary to resolve matters of uh, disagreement, where two thirds majority is in fact a blunt cudgel, unnecessary, because we really aren't flying at any risk. You guys chose to, on your own, ignore the majority direction of this council, essentially insulting those who were present on the 23rd, who had an expectation, a reasonable expectation that you would do as you were asked to do, and that only, only one uh, case uh, voted to do. You could have had this conversation here in exactly the same way, having returned with fidelity the direction of the 23rd, but you chose not to. And for that reason, very tangible, the two thirds vote to change bylaws exposes this group to the tyranny of minorities such as yours, who would choose to take it upon yourself without even offering the conversation and the rationale, some of which well thought out and others of which continuing to be debatable. Uh, but you made that choice and in doing so made very clear to me that GMAC, as long as it has people sitting in it and my door, uh, subcommittees who have the potential and the power to overrule the majority by fiat, uh, don't belong in this group. 
don't belong in this organization and such a situation fails to serve this community properly. I'm done. Robert? Um, with all due respect, uh, Dave, <coughs> um, we followed um, the of the council from the get-go, I, I have to say, when um, we handed over the bylaws to county council. But I, I, I had to write down some things here, but I feel the well was kind of tainted when an initial edited draft of the bylaws was circulated and it alluded to a kind of a, a perceived undemocratic process during the last amendment bylaws update in 2020. And that's kind of been a crawl on my side since we since our current amended bylaws edits have been initiated. But on a positive note, I've, I've been through this process before and have again witnessed the council making many good democratic changes this time around. I'd like to see us all get on the same page moving forward. In my opinion, there should be a convincing, resounding two thirds majority vote to accept the current body of work and to memorialize it for the foreseeable future. Changing something as important as our governing document, you know, provided county council accepts our prepared draft, shouldn't be so simple as to only require a simple majority vote. It's actually a monumental achievement. It's a document whose content we now agree on, everything except for this last item, and will guide us as we move forward in our advisory roles. So it shouldn't be loosely regarded as something that we can just uh, simply change. We should be proud of what we have accomplished with this rewrite and willing to support it wholeheartedly, all, all six of us here. That's my two cents. Henry? Uh, yeah, so to um, respond to Dave, uh, for the record, I agree that I think the committee should have returned the draft that matched the majority opinion um, as expressed in the straw poll. Um, however, I'm sympathetic to the view of others on the committee who felt that in the absence of formal instruction, it was their responsibility to vote for the way they felt the committee should return the draft. Uh, I felt differently, but um, I thought it was the right of other committee member, members to vote the way they did. Uh, I agree with you that we could have had this conversation from either starting point. It doesn't change the conversation. Uh, the fact that the committee returned a draft in one way versus another does not in any way change what the full council can do. Uh, I, I know you seem to think that the committee returning a draft is in some way tyranny of the minority, but it doesn't actually change what the capacity of the council is in any way. As you say, we could have had the same conversation about the same issue. It really didn't matter. We knew we were going to have this conversation. What the draft committee, what what draft the committee returned, whether it says two-thirds or simple majority, the same. It's the conversation of what we decide to do as a full council that's going to determine what language goes into the bylaw. Okay. Um, anyone else got a comment? Okay, then I'll offer mine. Um, the driving force behind this whole document is policy 51. Mm -hmm. And that was the impetus for us going back and reviewing our bylaws. And in disagreement, um, these bylaws, the policy 51 was put in place on September 20th, 2016. So these bylaws here should have been reflected in the 2020 revision. It wasn't. Um, according to policy 51, it says, no bylaws shall be required to be adopted by the MAC. We're not required to have bylaws. Sure. So for, and to see what we got back from county council, shows that we independently, not we, previous councils drafted their own independent documents who were not in compliance with policy 51. We're trying to clean that up now. I know all of you got the, the uh, comments from county council, but I'll refresh our memory. Under article seven, uh, section 7.01, there was a comment from county council and that said, we may need to ad address this, and that is addressing the two-thirds vote. It was addressing the amending of the bylaws. 
Right, the two thirds vote majority for the amendment of the bylaws. That comment was about the entirety of that section, not about the two thirds vote specifically, am I correct? It, it's section 701 is, yeah. these bylaws may be amended by the affirmative vote of two thirds majority of the council members under section 7.02. County council may need to address this. Most committees, have their bylaws approved by the Board of Supervisors, need to check if this is consistent with this organizing document. So regardless of what we do, this document will be going to the Board of Supervisors for approval. So, um, but I wanted to let you know that that is the, the guidelines that we're getting from County Council is that that is a that is a section that is not consistent with policy fifty one. Henry, uh, I believe County Council's question was whether we could amend our bylaws at all. No, no. I think I think what it is is that all once we approve our bylaws, whether it's two thirds or majority, that we really don't have the authority to approve our bylaws. The only group that has the authority to approve our bylaws is the Board of Supervisors. So it's really almost 7.01 is immaterial because it doesn't matter if we want to approve it by two thirds or a majority, it's not our decision. It's basically our consensus sending it forward and getting the Board of Supervisors to approve it. So I don't want to get bogged down in the two thirds majority because it really is out of our hands. It really is in the hands of the Board of Supervisors. And if anybody has any questions on that, we can uh, address that with County Council. Um, one further question. If, uh, did anyone ever receive follow up from that? No, because unfortunately the County Council left the area. Um, procedurally, and correct me if I'm wrong, we have one more reading on uh, the March meeting. It will be posted 14 days in advance. This council will have the ability to either vote it up or down. Uh, regardless of the vote, when it is finally approved, if it's finally approved, it will go to the county and will be sent to county council and probably to the board of directors for review and approval. So these are only recommendations that we're making, mm -hmm. um, but I, I think it's imperative of us to make sure that we get it right and that we adhere to policy 51. Uh, any other questions, comments from the committee? None? Any? Comment from council, Dave. So next steps, the committee will then finalize the content. So there's, again, we have a released version that doesn't have some of the language that we've discussed. There's, is that correct, Henry, or is, is everything all in now? Uh, no, there, there's one uh, one change from this document, which was the addition of the language I read, um, which was at the end of 5.10, uh, of adding, yeah. um, that language about who can make a motion yep. to reconsider. Consistent with the 123 conversation. Yeah, exactly. That was just an oversight on my part, which I apologize. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Uh, yes. So uh, I believe what we had said at uh, the bylaw meeting was our goal for this meeting was to come away with it with bylaws that we thought could pass. So that we were not continuing to revise, but had a set of bylaws right. that we could post on the website that we were confident to get five votes at the council. Well, I think I get two thirds vote. Right. I think the question we run into right now is we can't take a formal vote. No. Uh, so, and it appears that a consensus vote doesn't uh, hold water either because we had a consensus vote at the twenty third. So. I'm not quite sure how we move forward uh, on this. Well, uh, we had a majority vote on the 23rd. We did not have a voting body that could pass new bylaws. So our goal from that meeting, we said we were trying to come up with, to have right. something at the end of this meeting that could 
pass okay. of new bylaws. So you're looking requires two thirds. So you're looking for a consensus vote tonight, I, a consensus of opinion based on the document that is submitted now with your additions to it to move forward for the March meeting. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, basically we are not going to. I would like to come out of the March meeting with formally passed new bylaws. Uh, ideally, I'd love to send them to county council before that vote, uh, if we can. But the only way we can do either of those things is if we come out of this meeting relatively confident that we can get five votes in March. I would um, I would say that based on, uh, because it is a public hearing, that it would be premature to submit this document to county council because there may be public review and comments on it as well that may need further amendment. That's so uh, I would say, no, we will just do it in-house. And once we have our final document uh, complete with public input, then we will forward that to county council. Uh, so then the next question is, what should be in that final document? Um, well, my question to the committee is, if there is a consensus vote tonight, is that going to be a guide to the committee to amend the bylaws according to that consensus vote, or will it go back to the committee to have a separate vote that could uh, supersede the direction from tonight? My, my reading of the rules uh, is that uh, if there is a formal motion passed by the council. We can't do a formal motion because uh, it's not because it's not a we're not we're not approving the bylaws tonight. So no, no, no. but there's um in in this is an agendized item um that we're discussing the bylaws. Um it's well within that agendized item for the council to have a motion to recommit this issue to the committee with instructions. Uh, so if there is a formal motion to recommit to the committee with instructions about what should be in the document, I would view that as binding on the committee. Okay. Uh, that did not exist last time and couldn't have, I don't think, uh, but regardless didn't. Uh, but if that did, I would view that as being a binding instruction to the committee, saying that the committee must return language that meets the instructions of the full council. Realizing that the final vote will come up in March 1st. Right. Or March. It's not a vote on the bylaws. This right. is a vote to send it back to committee with further instructions. Okay. Uh, I think technically it's a motion to recommit. Okay, then we'll uh, entertain okay. a, if there's a motion on the table. I'll move to uh, direct the bylaw committee to make the addition in section 5.10 that was omitted under previous discussion on the 23rd of January as described earlier by Henry. In support of the word change in section 511 taken uh, unilaterally by the committee to exchange the word supported or provided. And to Change section 701 says that the bylaws may be amended by an affirmative vote of the majority of the council members under section 7.02. That is my motion. Okay. Do we have a second? I move to amend Dave's motion. Can't do it. Uh, that's uh, right, right now. It's just that. No, okay. right. Okay, I'll second it for discussion. Uh, any discussion on it? Okay, we have a motion to uh, change section point 701 to read these bylaws may be amended by the affirmative vote of a majority of the council members under section 7.02. We will take a roll call vote. Robert? Um, no. Okay, Dave? Yes. Don? No. Henry? No. Henry, uh, Melissa? No. Kevin, yes. Uh, uh, okay, do we have a substitute motion? Yes, uh, uh, I would like to move um, that uh, this go back to the committee with instructions to uh, retain that word switch to support from provide. 
to add the sentence to 5.10 about who that, that I already detailed before and to retain the two thirds majority language in section 701. I'll second that motion. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Robert? Yes. Dave? No. Don? Yes. Henry? Yes. Melissa? Yes. Kevin? No. Okay, it passes 4 2. Okay, next item. We have uh, public agency referrals. We have three of them. <coughs> So I'll turn to our secretary. Uh, which of these need uh, council appointment for review of the CDPs or what CDPs can we act okay. um, based on the information received? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I've got a little bit of correspondence to convey to the council members. I took the liberty of reaching out to uh, planning department staff on uh, item 8.1 and 8.2, essentially asked the question if they still needed our input because we're so tardy in responding to these two referrals. Um, what I got back from one of the planners, TSR, who's the leader for uh, CDP 2018-005, that's Clifton May, Greg and Mark Warner, is that they are interested in our feedback. Um, and they asked that, we provide that feedback as quickly as possible and certainly in time for, for March. So for that particular item, we should, I, I would suggest that uh, a couple of people volunteer to do the review and and uh, make a recommendation to council at our next meeting about disposition. Okay, do we have a couple of council members that would like to review the CDP 2018-0005, Clifton May, Greg and Mary Kate Warner. I'll do it. The last time it was Don and I that did it, I believe. So maybe it should be somebody else. Okay. You guys are familiar with it. If you still have the time and want to do it, maybe I'll facilitate your, your review. I mean, I also did the next one too. And uh... that one has a really different profile. I know. I'll get to. Okay. okay, then why don't I'll go ahead and do the Clifton, Main, Greg, and Mary Kate Warner. I'll do it with you. <laughs> um, and then uh, 8.2. I talked with uh, <clears throat> Liam Crowley. He's the, the planner who's uh, engaged in 2023-0039. And uh, what, what Mr. Crowley said was that the scope of this one, while it had been previously reviewed by GMAC, and Chris, mm -hmm. thanks for that. Um, the scope of the work has been reduced now. It's only drilling two test wells. Otherwise, the scope of the project um, is the same as originally pr proposed. He said that he doesn't think it's necessary for GMAC to review the project again. Right. So you know, we can roll with it or not. Uh, but that was the input from the planner. Can I fill you in on this guy a little bit more? While sure. I was still chair, um, they contacted me, not the county, but who was it here? A senior planner working for Amy Wynn. And they were wondering why we didn't hear it at the December meeting. And so I explained that we what I, we got into, they saw that we got into, um, they listened to the video, they saw that we got into all of the bylaw stuff at that time. And so they were wondering, if we were gonna weigh in on this again. I wrote a letter back to um, the lady at uh, Amy Wynn and stated that um, if the county wanted us to review it again, um, please let GMAC know, but that we didn't see any issue. If there's nothing else that had changed other than they had drilled the wells, which I believe they, or they have drilled a well at this point and established water, that there was probably no reason for it to come back or to GMAC. So, just want to make you all aware that I did get a letter off to uh, did you, Jimmy Wayman Wynn. Did you receive a comment? Back um, from that? Thank you or something. I'd have to look. I, I don't recall. Then can I make a recommendation? Why don't you take it on singly? Okay. And see if, in fact, that uh, they'd respond to your, to your communication. If not, then we can go ahead and pursue it. Building planning? Or, yeah, okay. Yeah, so, whoever your contact person is. Robert. Well, that was just <clears throat> Megan from Amy Wynn. Robert, how about if I forward 
uh, contact and for the county planner okay. to you. Mm -hmm. And would you like to follow up with that person sure. to close the loop? Sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Robert. Okay, eight uh, eight point three twenty twenty three boundary boundary line adjustment. Just like I described, it's a pretty minor project. Um, you know, GMAC can get in the middle of it if it if it wants to. Uh, it's again, it's a it's a consolidation of two small properties. Zoning in the area is ten acre minimum. It's just south of Anchor Bay on the east side of the highway. Uh, it's not going to create a developable lot because of the zoning restriction. Uh, if I had to guess, and this is, again, I'm guessing it's just suspicion. It's either just to simplify the financing purposes, or maybe they want to put in an accessory. Mm -hmm. uh, one way or the other, it's upslope and in the trees away from the highway. Uh, to me, it seems like something that the county probably doesn't need our input on. But that's again, that's my position. I, I would certainly uh, be happy to support council's interest in commenting if, if there was an interest. Is there someone on the council that would like to review this CDP? I viewed it online and I concur with what David has said. I mean, I know the property, um, both properties, so I don't see any issues. Sounds like something we could. Take action on. Well, the action that I would recommend, uh, I'll send a response. I think, and we need to get in the habit of sending responses in writing, right. in response to the referral, saying that we don't have a comment, just so that again, that that box is checked off, and nobody's kind of dangling it wind. If that is the pleasure of the council. Um, so I'll take a. If there's a motion to direct uh, our secretary, Dave, to send a yeah, a comment of no comment. Yeah, uh, move uh, that the secretary send that no comment message. Okay, we have a motion by Henry. Do we have a second? Second. Full second? Second by Robert. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay, on to nine point many. Okay, <laughs> um, under 9.1, the reason that this is on here tonight is kind of keeping in line with what other governmental agencies do that at the beginning of the year, they reorganize their committees. Uh, we know that the uh, county has taken on the dubious task of eliminating uh, committees that are no longer relevant. They're not meeting, they're not reporting back to the, to the board. Uh, I find that we have committees like that in this list. So what I would like to do um, is make a recommendation and get council input. Um, and I don't mean to single out Don, but uh, for electric uh, vehicle charging, I don't know if that needs to be a committee or if that's just something if Don has a report that he would like to share that we can agendize and say, Don, okay, go ahead and share that report but not put a burden on you to re report back every council meeting if there's nothing to report on. Same thing with affordable housing, water supply. Um, so I would like to go down this list and find out what committees the council feels uh, we can sunset. And if, if there are particular point of contact people that would like to report, back to us, they can, um, but I think we don't need to put on our agenda 10 uh, committees. So I'll entertain any comments from the council members. Don? Yeah, uh, I kind of agree that, you know, the electrical vehicle charging situation, that can just be brought up as needed in the future when something comes up. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, a monthly report or anything. So, I'll, you know, I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, let, well, let's go down the list. Uh, Bower Park renovation. Uh, my opinion is that makes sense to retain as an ad hoc committee. It doesn't necessarily have to take a lot of airtime, but it'd be nice to have the committee in place to respond as things happen, especially if things are happening off cycle, uh, where input from the committee might be requested. 
I'm Connor and Barry Nett. Yeah. Uh, conflict of interest is, is such a sensitive area. And in a case like Bower Park, where there are a number of members of the council that are, are interested in, and, uh, you know, <laughs> This would be a case where we've got a project that has a specific time frame and a specific scope, uh, the renovation. Uh, that's different than Bower Park operations generally, and GMAC doesn't get into that. Uh, but this is a case with such extensive interest across the entire council that uh, I think it's we should be very careful about conflict. We should be very careful about potential Brown Act violations, such as we were kind of tiptoeing around in the distribution of county uh, information materials and coordination with friends of Bower Park and others. Again, this is a case where it's a defined project, defined uh, scope and time frame. Uh, on a project that's led by a different entity, it's not ours, not led by the county. My recommendation is that we establish a liaison, uh, a point of contact through which uh, information flows back and forth between us and the county. Mm -hmm. uh, and in doing so, that liaison is certainly responsible for reporting honestly and completely, uh, but also uh, managing the information flow so that this group is protected from potential conflict and Brown Act violations. Okay. So I don't recommend the committee giving oversight here. If there's a need for the full, for more than one individual on this council to comment on the project, then it, then the liaison can bring it back to us as a as a discussion and action item. Okay, uh, got it. Henry. I have a question. Uh, what conflict are you concerned about? Can you detail that? Bower Park is not just a center of um, activity. It's it's programming. It's people have say, for example, interests in a particular sport type who might be biased for a particular type of improvement. It could be a neighbor, somebody who's within 500 feet of the property who needs to be careful about what he or she say, says in conversation now and has to manage that issue. Yeah. Um, we all have an interest in Bower Park. It, it's, in, it's one of the centers of the community. Yeah. Um, and, and that close interest is something that we should be very sensitive to with, with respect to potential conflict. Uh, the fact that many of us are interested in being engaged uh, and have gotten on the distribution list begins to raise the issue of potential Brown Act violation. Even yeah, on the Brown Act, definitely. We're going to have a hard time controlling how that how the external agents communicate with us. That's that's really not their job. It's that we have to control it. And so those are my concerns. Uh, I manage them already myself by staying out of it because I am a neighbor, mm -hmm. um, and that's just how it is. Yeah. Uh, aside from this strategic conversation, you will not hear me engage in this company on that project because of conflict. Yeah. Um. I don't, go ahead. Sorry. Um. Okay. My my feeling on this is uh, exactly what what Dave said that the email list has included over a, ma a majority of our council members. And I think we need a single point of contact with the county. Um, now we have to find out who their new director is going to be. Um, <laughs> under the privilege of the chair um, Sorry, in you making committee appointments. Do, do you mind if I try to persuade you one more time on this before uh, you make a decision, or do you want to just make a decision? I've got one, one other point there. Go ahead. Um, I, I just think, um, given that it's a month lag between council meetings, uh, I do think if uh, Mendocino County, should they ever choose to actually solicit our input on something, um, if they wanted our input on a ballot park issue tomorrow, mm -hmm. It'd be a shame to tell them, well, we'll get back to you in a month. Right. Uh, or more than a month in this case again. Um, so, um, uh, and I also don't think it would be appropriate for one person as the liaison who's primarily responsible for moving information back and forth to give an opinion on that. Um, I do think that's the proper place for a committee. And the fact that uh, an ad hoc committee can move relatively quickly. Uh, with at least a subset of council members weighing in, 
and then relay and say, this is not the opinion of the council, but the opinion of the Bower Park Committee. Uh, I think has value. Mm -hmm. That's all. I will counterpoint. Uh, because it's not the opinion of the council, there's very little value added, except that a subcommittee gets special access to a project that is of importance to the entire council and at risk of filtering whatever they may deem important to filter. And that um, risk consists of the liaison too? A lot less because the liaison, again, is required. Well, we have to instruct fairly direct pass through. The liaison that? isn't the commenter. Okay, the liaison is a channel. Right. You're well, suggesting it could also be a channel with the same instructions. It just also would have the ability to respond unless we think that we don't want off cycle responses. We want it to wait at least a month yeah. for responses. I'm not so sanguine about the risk of rapid turnaround commenting cycles. The county does not move quickly. It has to manage public processes and interfaces all over the place. They don't simply call a meeting and show up in a week or two. It just doesn't work out that way in reality. <clears throat> okay. Um, at this point, um, I'm going to go ahead and remove myself from the Bower Park uh, Renovation Committee. And I will, uh, because the chair has the ability as ex officio to attend everything, um, the Bower Park Renovation Committee will be Henry Mayer and Dan Lewis, pending his approval once he gets back. But that, that's going to be my recommendation for that committee. Um, the Caltrans State Route, State Route 1, Walala Downtown Enhancement Project. Uh, that uh, nine point three is being moved to our closed session, so we will we will uh, address the uh, appointment of the committee members on that committee. Uh, nine point four, the Walala Community Center reconstruction master plan. Uh, Dave Spock is the council representative for the rebuilding committee, so. Uh, my recommendation is to have a committee of one and he can report back to us. Yeah. I think you're in a better position to do that. Why? Because I'm sitting here left? No, because I'm you're closer, really close to the work. <clears throat> um, so I, I, with all due respect, I'd recommend that you be the liaison for it. Okay, then I will serve as the liaison for the reconstruction. Uh, and uh, Okay, so, right. so it's, uh, effectively, it's not a committee. No, it's not. So, but I can't dissolve a committee as a chair. I don't think a chair can dissolve a committee. That's the council vote. But I can, uh, but I can appoint the the members. Gotcha. Um, can I add one point of order question on that? Uh, on these, uh, I think we should make very clear as we're talking about these committees whether they are ad hoc or standing. Uh, so that we don't run into trouble. I believe they're all ad hoc. Yeah, I don't so definitely. I mean, oh, yeah, so I Bauer, don't believe we have a standing committee. Right, but okay. I just think we should affirm with each of these that we think it is appropriate that it be ad hoc. I think for all of them that we've covered so That's far, right. I totally agree. I just want okay, to Bauer Park is an ad hoc committee. The Walla Community Center Reconstruction is a ad hoc committee. The Mendocino County Local Coastal Program and Walla Plan town plan update committee. It is a committee of three. How many How many times has the committee met? None. Zero. Zero. Uh, do we feel that we need this committee right now or do we just need a, a point of contact? Oh, what are you asking me? Um, point of contact probably would be good for the time being. That's what it's been kind of working on with David. Uh, giving us updates from the Grassroot Institute. Okay. I concur. So uh, then I will appoint a point of contact will be uh, Council Member Spock. Uh, point of where you, you can, under current bylaws, you can dissolve committees. It's um, both standing and ad hoc committees may just be dissolved at any time by the chair upon finding the committee's work has concluded. Okay, fair enough. Um, then we will, uh, 
dissolve the electric vehicle charging and have Don as our point of contact and can report back to us. Um, economic development, I can tell you that that's another committee that isn't really a committee, but it's one that uh, based on information received can be agendized and, and shared with us. So I would be uh, in a position because I think Robert and I are the only two members on that. Um, I think at last meeting you said you'd like to be a part of that. I would be in favor right now of uh, sunsetting that unless we find that there's a need for an economic development committee. Any well, comment from council? I did um, follow through with a application for a grant in my role as the chair at the Chamber of Commerce, so to say. And Sonoma County is willing to um, give a grant of up to $5,000 for a visitor center in this community again to get restarted, to get going again. And when I met um, with Raymond mm -hmm. um, Martinez or- um, Yeah, from the and, Mendocino. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was one of his prerequisites is that if, well, not a prerequisite, but it was one of his desires that if Sonoma County, which is the wealthier county, would participate again that uh, Mendocino County would. So I'm in the process of getting things, trying to get things going on that again. So okay. I think it'd be worthy to keep a economic development from that perspective uh, committee going. Okay. Any, Henry? Yeah, so this is one where, unless we can elucidate a way in which this is inherently time bound, I do think this one should, under the Brown Act, be a standing committee. Uh, okay. I think that's true for this and the remaining committees. Uh, again, for each one, unless unless we have a way to say this is bound in time by some sort of specific criteria, um, I think all of these would fall under the rubric of standing committee. Okay. I'm happy to have people disagree. But that's I mean, good. economic development encompasses so much more than just the visitor center. Right. You got a point there. It's just not clear when it would end. Okay, so is that the direction of the council to go ahead and make that a standing committee? Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, couldn't be because it's miserable brown act, but I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. think the, the only yeah, reason yeah. It, I, I, I shy away from a standing committee is because then we have to advertise our meetings and yeah, yeah, it, it really kind of restricts Let's your independence. Okay. Well, wait. Sorry. If it's ad hoc, then you it don't have to have an anthem. It has to have a logical. Wait, it doesn't have to have a date. Nope, it doesn't. Uh, doesn't. Doesn't have to have a. It has to be redone every year. County councils, you should uh, read or watch the last this year's um, Brown Act and conflict of interest briefing. Yeah, I'm annoyed that I missed that. I, I asked that question. Okay. About, about temporal and scope issues. Uh huh. And uh, the response to paraphrase was, yeah, temporary is good, but nobody really knows exactly what temporary is. Okay. Some people feel it's like six months. Some people think it's a year. And then other people say, you know, ad hoc is something that it's anticipated to end. Yeah. It's a tangible anticipation, even if there isn't a schedule. Right. And so if an ad hoc runs past a year, just review it. Right, but, but it's a logical end. Well, <laughs> What's logic? Sometimes it's hard yeah. to uh, assign right. logic to human behavior, but the 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 thing is that it, it's an activity that is likely to end. There's a, a reasonable expectation for ending. Yeah. You just don't actually know the schedule. Right. So ad hoc can persist. It should be revisited right. no no less frequently than each year. But it still has to have a reason to expect that it would end at some point, right? Right. Now, if you like the economic development but, committee group. Yeah. But to your point, too, let's, if you want to dig a little bit more, and I will not be long on this, we set up committees when we have a programmatic init initiative, something that we're actually trying to accomplish that can be described in a discrete manner. And the words economic development, to Robert's really good point, is it covers a lot of stuff and many things interact with it. And the fact of the matter is, we have occasional activities like your pursuit for grant money to restart a, a chamber or other kind of episodic things. We, we don't actually have a coherent program that would warrant a standing committee 
to go do study this thing or make this discrete activity occur. I mean, that no, even a even a standing committee. We don't have a program related to economic development. We've got an interest, and we 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 we've, every now and then we we get hot and go after a lead, but we don't actually have what typically constitutes a, a reason to exist for a, a standing committee. We're in this weird place between ad hoc and standing. And under the circumstance, because the Brown Act, the burden of the Brown Act is, is frankly inconvenient. Yeah, it is long. My recommendation is you want a committee, start with ad hoc as the initial assumption. If it goes long, redo it if you want to have it longer. But until you actually have a constituted program that's an expression of our mission, to do a particular thing and operate a certain way, avoid standing committees. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't have any particular desire to have it be a standing committee. It's my know. view of it that was required to have sure. such a thing be standing, but that's not my decision to make. That's just my view of it. Okay, we'll, we'll move forward. Um, and if the committees feel that they are uh, have more need to, to change it from ad hoc to standing, we can do that. So Kevin, you and Robert will be the so economic. Robert and I will be the economic development um, affordable housing. Who's on that committee, and have you met? Just me, and I haven't met with anybody. Um, what's your recommendation on that committee? Oh, with all the other issues that are involved around housing, I'd say dissolve it for the time being. Okay. Chair, sure. Don. Uh, is there any reason why that couldn't be folded under economic development? I mean, housing to me is then there's even more under development. <laughs> um, even even if you know you're not actively pursuing anything at any one point in time, maybe in three months, maybe in six months, something comes up under the umbrella of affordable housing, but. Yeah, that, that then that could be covered by the economic development. Uh, how, how about if, okay? How about if we put that under the umbrella of the economic development committee and just that, that as part of their as part of their purview? And that makes direction. sense to me. Okay, we will we will do that. Are you, Robert, are you fine That's with that? Fine. Yeah. Okay, but it's just going to be that much more still. But um, well, we haven't had a report on it for any so anyway, might... so I don't think it's going to be. A huge should we put water supply under that too then? Uh, <laughs> okay, come on. Um, okay, water supply. <laughs> it's have you it's you and Melissa and who? And um Don. Okay, have you guys met? Not really. We have in the past before, but we haven't met in a long time. Okay, so why don't we sunset that now? And if you find that there are water issues to address. Then we can reintroduce the water supply committee. Are you guys fine okay. with that? Fine. Yeah. Melissa? The drought isn't going to end. I don't think there's any real need for a water committee because what we could say, oh, we still don't have enough water. That's it. Well, I believe we've got a lot of water issues that are plaguing Malala in our regional area, but I, I don't think the water supply committee is going to be the one to address that but yeah we will work with our our local provider and and uh, uh north walala uh is is really good at keeping in touch with us and if there's information that's pertinent for the council and to disseminate to the public we can do so and we don't need to have it as a committee um Website, social media, telecommunications, community broadband access. They're done. Well, well, the, you know, <laughs> how many hats are you wearing? <laughs> I I think uh, it does make sense to leave some whether we call it that or something else, um, technology committee or something. Uh, I think we do need something, uh, especially since. As I will, well, wait, this is committee reports, huh? We're not actually going through the committee reports here. We're talking about whether- No, we're, or whether or not we're going to keep these committees. Yeah, we're okay, we're doing going to be that committee reports report. because I do have a report okay. to present. <laughs> and this is going to be an ongoing thing. So I do not recommend 
that we uh, get rid of this. Okay, my question is, is this something that you could report to us under, if you have something to report, you can let the chair know to put that on the agenda, but not have it a regular item on the agenda every month, uh, expecting you to make a report, uh, or should it be just when you have something yeah, although, to share? Although the reality is, you know, if somebody who's, you know, part of these committees and in my case, okay, yeah, website, telecommunications, it's been mostly me, uh, have, you know, having a requirement that you report every month is really not that big a deal. If there is nothing to report, you just say there's nothing to report and you move on to the next item. Okay. So uh, I don't think, you know, GMAC expects a written presentation report every month just because we have no a committee. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, you're on the committee and who else? Who else serves with you? Well, Henry and, and okay. actually I'm gonna ask Henry. Are you fine with that? Yeah, yeah. Um uh, uh yeah, I mean I, I I make the same comment with this, which is that it feels like the same committee, unfortunately, to me, but um again, that is not my decision to make. Okay. Um there's one committee that was not on here, and I'm going to add it at the prerogative of the chair. And that's our Constitution and Bylaw Committee. And right now, I think the committee has done an excellent job in getting to this point. I think we're in the edit stage. And so I am going to appoint Henry and Dave as the Bylaw Committee, uh, because you guys are probably the most knowledgeable as far as getting the final detail and, and getting it all the I's dotted and the T's crossed. I think the council and the, the previous committee have done a great job in getting us to this point. Now it's more an edit. So I think uh, the two best people, in my opinion, to edit it will be Dave and Henry. Any comments? Dave? Do you need me to- Do you need, be, well, do you need great question. Yeah, do you need me to be involved in wrapping this up? Or do you want to- I don't think there's any scope for decision making. I think there's a, been a formal instruction to the committee saying this is what okay. the final draft is. Uh, My recommendation, and I have confidence in Henry at this point, okay. will we'll follow through on the direction of the council. So okay. I, I think there you go. So the committee uh, is now a committee of one. You accept that challenge? Absolutely. <laughs> will, Thank you. I will send you all the new document and do nothing. Else. Okay. Um, any other? Comments, questions from anyone? I have a small point of information. Yeah. Um, Robert's Rules of Orders, this is just to clarify what we've been talking about. Nothing new. 5010, by special, so, by special select or ad hoc committee, is a committee appointed as the need arises to carry out a, spec a specified task at the completion of which, that is, on presentation of its final report to the assembly, it automatically ceases to exist. A special committee may not be appointed to perform a task that falls within the assigned functions of an existing standards committee. So can you summarize that? That was the summary. That was the summary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, Robert Tools is no fun. No. Um, Okay, we don't have a treasure tonight. Uh, so we don't have a treasure report, order. Dave. Point of order. Yes, go ahead. The committee reports, we actually didn't do any committee reports. We just went through them to see if we're going to okay. get them or not, right? <laughs> right. So if your committee doesn't exist anymore, I don't want to report. Okay. <laughs> it says committee reports, review and make committee appointments. Okay. That was okay. Now we're at. 9.2, right? Okay, so Bower Park, do you have anything, Henry? Nope. That was short. Um, okay, we're going to hold off on the Caltrans. Uh, well, no. Well, is there a Caltrans report? I don't. Nope. I'm Chair. not on the committee. I, I can offer comments, but. Don? Yeah, I just noticed some information that, in fact, uh, and I think this was sent from MCOG, that uh, the money uh, was appropriated 
for the left turn lane at Ocean Drive. Okay. So they so it's going to be done. All right. Dave? Yeah, unless the committee has anything to add, I, I have a couple of comments. Please. So, Don, you're right that the, the money for the left turn lane at Ocean was added as a separate eight, it's a separate funding item from the streetscape itself. Um, and Caltrans did make that uh, request and the CTC, California Transportation Commission has approved it. Furthermore, the California Transportation Commission has uh, reviewed and approved the county's request for their regional transportation uh, program funding, uh, thus closing the funding gap for the streetscape or helping Caltrans close that gap and uh, enhance the Mountain View Rehabilitation Project in ways that will help that road, that important east west connected for us. Stay, stay in one place for a while. Go ahead. Which is a um, separate allocation of money on so Mountain View Road. Yeah, Mountain two View. Million or something like that I saw. It's a $2 million enhancement. Right. So in addition to about one and sub that were programmed for rehabilitation. Uh, so all, again, all good news, the county's request was, was uh, tendered and accepted in, in full. I don't have any other report. Okay. Um, well, all the community center reconstruction and master plan, uh, no update on that right now. Um, the uh, local coastal program and town plan update. I have no report. Okay. Vehicle, oh, well, vehicle charging, <laughs> it doesn't exist, but you can report on it if you want. I have nothing to add. Okay. Economic development, I don't have anything, Robert. Do you want a more complete one that I had prepared or? Yeah, if you have one, go for it. <laughs> okay, after um, meeting with uh, Visit Mendocino County, um, Ramon Jimenez and discussing the status of the Redwood Coast Visitor Center in Malala, he expressed that VMC would like to stop to continue to be a supporter and that it would be ideal if Sonoma County Tourism would also be as they had been in the past. <clears throat> uh, so I proceeded to contact Sonoma County Tourism and they informed me of a Visitor Center Infrastructure Grant, which had a deadline of January 1st. The grant application was completed in a timely manner and I heard back from Sonoma County Tourism that their board had approved a funding grant of up to 5000 so it'd be contingent upon uh, a matching grant from BMC and a business plan to be agreed upon by Sonoma County Tourism, Visit Mendocino County, and the Redwood Coast Visitor Center by April 1st. So Sonoma County Tourism is preparing acknowledgements and agreements to send for signature and is looking to schedule a meeting as soon as possible. So I informed um, Visit Mendocino County of, of these acknowledgements, acknowledgements and agreements that are coming and um, we'll forward it to their visitor center committee for review. So I also, in planning forward, I wanted to get together with you, Kevin, and I think it'd be beneficial to contact Cab and Mar Vista and others on the South Coast to see what feels best um, to serve our South Coast or local community from, the, from that perspective. So that's the complete report. Great, thank you. Excellent, any questions for Robert? Thank you, Robert, for doing that. Um, right on. Affordable housing. Anything Nothing. affordable? Nope. Anything affordable? No. Huh? Yeah. Uh, water supply. We have plenty of water right now. Um, and it's, run, it's running down the highway. Um, any, any other? It's coming up in my garage. Coming up. Quick question. For yes. Just my notes. Um, Running back electric vehicle charging. Did you? Did you? He didn't have a report. A report? None. I could add one thing though. Well, go for it if you don't mind. Um, uh, let's see. Mendocino County lost out on the grant program for electric vehicle charging funding from the federal government uh, for the charging and fueling infrastructure grant program that was launched uh, last year. So that's a disappointment, um, but I was kind of curious uh, as to you know how they you know applied for grant funding. So I requested, made a public request for the documents that they sent to the federal government, and uh, it appears they have provided them. 
to me, although I haven't had time. I just got an email from them today. So I need to look into that. And so I'll, I'll take a look at you know what, what the county actually did. Just out of curiosity, and maybe uh I you know, I made a statement in front of the Board of Supervisors about this uh at the last meeting, and I encouraged them to not give up to because there will be other opportunities most likely coming up, perhaps this year. Um that you know, they prepare themselves to apply again for grant money when <clears throat> when it's made available. Um, so that's what I have to say about EV charging. Any questions for Don? Does your crystal ball show anything in the future? Uh, I haven't caught wind of anything, but I think there's still uh, federal monies. Uh, I don't think they allocated all of the money that they uh, that the Congress allocated, mm -hmm. the Federal Highway Administration has not allocated all the money. Yet. They didn't do it all at once. So. Okay. Thank you for that. Dave, did you, did you have a report on the GCC rebuild? No. Okay. Great. Thank you. Sorry. No worries. Just skipping right through this. Bingo. Um, water supply. Yeah, we did that. The Water Committee done. Uh, website, social media, telecommunications, broadband access. Um, just a procedural question since we didn't do it under um, 9.1. What would you guys like your committee to be called if the present name has too many words in it? If we what? 9.10, 9 do we have a shorter name? Do you have a different oh. name that you'd like instead technology of technology uh, committee? The everything. Uh, uh, technology just, committee would be good. Yeah. Okay. Technology? Good. So be it. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, I well, I don't need to go into the second, but for sure, I, technology is good. That's what we got. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay, that covers all the reports. Uh, oh, we yeah. have no, 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 no. no. Uh, What's that? Tech, I think the newly renamed technology committee has a. Yeah. Report. Oh, you do have. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not just a new name. Wow. Kevin. Okay, so um, I'm displaying, you know, the report that I'm providing okay. up here. That's big enough. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. Is that nice. better? Yeah. Better. Okay. So uh, I'm finally getting started on developing a new website. Uh, it's taken a while, but actually uh, it's a good thing because you know, we use WordPress, which is uh, industry standard uh, platform and software uh, for website building. And uh, they just, late last year, they came out with a new version, which actually makes it a lot easier to build a website. And so I'm using that platform and the latest theme, which they call 2024. And the theme is basically uh, sort of design elements that you use, you know, to build the website. Anyway, uh, right now uh, for the web hosting, we're using MCN, and that's it. That's one hundred seventy-eight point eighty dollars um, a year. Uh, the domain registration is Network Solutions. Uh, that's approximately ten dollars a year, maybe a little bit more. Um, in fact, when I signed up for this, uh, I signed up for 10 years because it, it was quite a significant discount if you go for 10, 10 years. And that's the domain registrar. So they maintain our domain name, guallalamat.org. So that's a requirement. If we don't do that, uh, nobody finds us on the internet. So... Okay, WordPress, uh, WordPress 6.4.2, there's the theme. And uh, for the time being, I've just got a, a backup plugin, which allows me to back up the website and restore it. I've tested that, it works great. Now, uh, what are the goals? I think we've discussed this a little bit in the past, but you know, one of my, my main goals is to just update and modernize uh, the look and feel of the website. Mm -hmm. Um, our website dates back to 2017. Uh, they were using, of course, an older version of WordPress and an older theme. 
that I hesitated to actually dig into it and change because we didn't want to break it because uh, I did not build it. <clears throat> uh, so uh, this is a, uh, what we're using then is an industry standard platform with no customized coding. In other words, myself or anybody else that comes along and maintains this website does not have to know CSS coding or anything. It's all, uh, it, it's based on blocks and you edit these blocks and insert them into your page that you're creating. Uh, and it's, it's a very powerful solution that doesn't require coding. So that's important in terms of long-term maintenance. Uh, another goal, of course, is to really expand the range of relevant information available. Uh, we really don't have much on our website now. Uh, not only does it not look attractive, but there really isn't that much there. I mean, the essential stuff is there in terms of uh, our meeting announcements, and that's important in any documents that we uh, want to post. But uh, there's a lot more information that I think a website for you know, GMAC could provide to the community. So, uh, you know, the goal is to provide a web experience that is more visually pleasing with updated fonts, colors, and a number of images and videos. So the idea here is to make it attractive, make it so that people like to visit our website and would come back more often for information, not only about GMAC, but about the community. Uh, thus attracting more visits to the site. <clears throat> so also we want to better inform the community about county actions under consideration or taken by the Board of Supervisors. We have our current website has virtually no information about what the county is doing. Mm -hmm. And the reality is the county governs us. We don't govern ourselves, it's the county. So I think more information about what the county is up to, what the Board of Supervisors is doing, what they have done in the past, what uh, declarations, what resolutions they have, they have passed. Let's make that easier for members of our community to find out about as opposed to forcing them to go to the county website, which I don't find very friendly, quite frankly. I'm sure a number of you, it's not the greatest website in the world. It looks 10 years old or something, it's designed. So uh, I also want to provide uh, appropriate website capabilities to more easily navigate the site. Mm -hmm. So you can quickly jump around from one page to the next from a document to uh, an image or something that you might want to review. And uh, to that point, I want to showcase, or I think it's a good idea to showcase the unique and desirable qualities of Walala, and especially the natural coastal mm -hmm. environment we live in. And of course, highlighting certain essential services that our community relies on, RCMS, Coast Life Support, Fire Department, Sheriff, et cetera. Um, also, timely reports on progress of key community projects, such as the rebuilding of the community center, streetscape, borough park improvements. You can have pages dedicated to these projects where people know that they can go and find out you know, what's going on. Um, I want to provide an easier method to post the GMAC meeting announcements. Uh, where there's sort of a, a framework uh, for the meeting announcement that doesn't require much work or requires less work to actually do the posting that's required uh, under the Brown Act for announcing our meetings. And uh, the other goal uh, I'm hoping to achieve here is to provide a means for other GMAC members other than myself to provide content. The key to the success of any new website is content. So what do we put on that website? Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, and I don't want to be 100% responsible for all the content that is on this website. I think it's, it's fair uh, to have other people contribute um, to what's on this website. And there are means within WordPress 
to give people different roles. Uh, not everybody has to be an administrator. I'm an administrator, obviously. We're going to make Henry an administrator. Mm -hmm. uh, but others on GMAC do not have to be administrators, but can be contributors to content. Um, optionally, we could permit public comments, but perhaps only subject to approval prior to posting. So we can set the website up so that yes, people can comment, but one of us is gonna to have to review those comments before they actually get posted. And uh, the other great thing we could do this would be to provide uh, a Spanish language version as well. And WordPress, uh, I think within either this year or early next year, uh, we'll come out with tools that will easily uh, convert an English language website into Spanish, for example. Because I really think we need to reach out to others in our community who aren't necessarily fluent in English. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, a governmental responsibility. And, and I hope we, uh, you know, acknowledge that at some point in the future, as soon as we can, with our website. Now, uh, what are the other Mac, other Macs in the county doing? Do you, you want to discuss any of that first, or is it? Uh, okay, sure. Yeah. Right. Let's. Uh, any input in these? And, and I do. Once I'm, we're done with this, I will show you a mock-up of what we're, okay. what we're doing. Okay. Robert, do you have any? Questions, comments? Does the county do something like that too, as far as uh, offered in another language? Um, I don't recall. I'm not sure. That's a great idea. Whenever, I think yeah. for our other, community, other webs yeah. other websites can do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm signed up for help memos from the county, and I get two copies one's in English, one's mm -hmm. in Spanish. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I don't, don't see anything on the website that lets you do it though. Yeah, that's their notification, but I don't believe their website is. I don't, I don't see anything translated into Spanish. Don, but that's a good point, Melissa. Don, I know when I get the Coastal Commission um, agendas, always it's always in Spanish too. So I think that'd be a great idea. Coastal Commission. Yeah, that's where I remember seeing it, not the county. Yeah, but I think it's a great idea, especially when you consider how many Hispanics live in the area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, my understanding is it's about twenty-five percent. Is that true? I don't know that, but. I see him and know a lot of them. Anyway, uh, you know, if we have a means to provide a better communication mm -hmm. with the Spanish-speaking community, we should do that. Yeah. Now, we're not going to have that capability right off the bat. Sure. But eventually, I'd like to see that. The idea is great. Boy. Henry? Yeah, I uh, I love this. This, I think, mm -hmm. would all provide just really great services for the community, especially things like updating what the town is doing, updating on projects that we're keeping an eye on, linking out to essential services. I thought it's like it's fantastic. And this is great. And I have only two um, things on here that I'm a little bit more reluctant on. One is I think we should probably stay away from moderating public comment on the website. That just feels like the whole thorny thicket uh, bringing in public comments feels to me like it's more more trouble than it's worth and that's a risk of various sorts. That's just my two cents on it. Um, and then the only other thing, the question, I don't, really, I don't have an issue with it, but um, looking at the things you want to provide on this website, uh, all of them look like things that would be really good for what I assume is our intended uh, audience of residents of Walla Walla and the surrounding area, except the showcase the unique and desirable qualities of Walla Walla, that feels like that would be something for non-residents mm -hmm. who, if we're being honest, probably aren't that likely to visit the GMAC website anyway. And so that, that's the only thing that stands out to me as doesn't doesn't necessarily match with the goal of the rest of it. And I don't have a problem with it. It was just, just a thought, but the rest of it, but I love it. I think this would be a really useful thing to provide to the community. Mm -hmm. Melissa? Mm -hmm. Do you have any any comments, questions? No. None. Dave, I kind of like the idea of having a place on the website to showcase. Mm -hmm. What's really about this place? 
and giving people who live here or interested in this place the opportunity to contribute content. It's a little bit like Jamie Jackson's, uh, you know, constant mm -hmm. content in the paper. It's we don't need to be the bearers of complicated, bad, irksome, otherwise concerning news all the time. You know, this just right. we can actually celebrate this fabulous place and the wonderful people who are in it. So I, I think it's groovy that you are thinking about that as something that you could, we could post on the site. Uh, the only other comment I have is beware. Uh, by adding all these wonderful features and creating places for content, somebody's gonna have to generate the content, put the content up and maintain it. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the perverse advantages of having a simple website is that it's not that difficult to keep. So careful what you wish for, because it's going to come at you like a like a truck barreling down the road. And you know, best of luck, Robert. I have enjoyed over uh, I don't know how long you've been doing it, but the subtle, nice pictures you've always put on. I mean, if that's just a part of your uh, what you say, they're showcasing the community, the area. I think that's that's along the lines of what Dave was saying. I think that's great. I mean, I enjoy, I was always looking forward to seeing your next picture. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Yeah, um, the idea about the pictures is that, you know, they would rotate. Yeah. Right. It was always something different. And it was yeah. just like, your craft. Like Jeannie Jackson does. Mm -hmm. you know? I think people. But they were your like pictures, weren't they? Yes. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Like beautiful photographs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're going to see some in a second. No, I'm um, I've, A couple comments. One, I love your presentation. It's spot on. So thank you for putting that together. A uh, couple key questions. One is, can you hyperlink to the organizations like RCMS and Coast Life Support? So if people want to know more about those agencies, we don't have to listen on ours, but wait, they can hyperlink. And... Wait, wait for the next. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> and... The other question is, how soon can it be launched? Because there's a couple of things like the community center and streetscape, well, and Bower Park too, that the public is chomping at the bit. They would like to see updated information. Um, so yeah, if that's something we can implement sooner rather than later would be great. So I'll reserve the rest because I'll wait for the rest of your presentation. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have any comments? So far? Just a quick question then. If I had to encapsulate one word of, of this concept, the overall concept, is it is it portal? Is that what you're after? Or portal? It, well, uh, to a certain extent, you, you might describe it as a portal because it really is a way to enter our website and then to go other places too, okay. as you'll okay. see. All right. Um, but it's also will be content rich. But a lot of the content uh, for a lot of things will be fairly static. Mm -hmm. So it won't require uh, frequent updates. Right. And, and, and actually some of the static uh, content, I'm hoping of course that others on the council uh, can help provide. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we will depend on other organizational websites. Because mm -hmm. we're, we're not going to rewrite all the information that others have about their organization onto our website. We're not right. going to do that. We don't have time to do that. We don't have the space. So uh, we'll have you know, brief information about an organization, and then boom, you go to the website. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what a homepage could look like now. This is really just um, uh, a mock-up that I've done. Uh, the final product is probably going to not look exactly like this, but it will use elements that you see uh, before you. Now, one thing we have, of course, we have the uh, navigation bar at the top. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these are all pages or, uh, you know, menu titles where you can go other places. But 
uh, you know, and, and you, you click on GMAC, which you just go home. Same with home, just takes you right back here. So one thing this website will do is if you just click on the picture and it expands to full screen. So that's kind of a, a nice advanced feature. Now, here's a read more, but that's not connected to anything at this point. Here's another picture and go full screen. Mm -hmm. I noticed that some of these elements are probably a little bit too small. I'll have to make them larger, some of the text here. But again, you know, full screen pictures and then an embedded video. Nice. Did you do oh, this? No. It's great. One of our exceptional sunsets. We don't have that many here, but some, sometimes when we get them, they're, they're pretty spectacular. Yeah. And it's exceptional. Yeah. Well, you captured a good one. Hmm. And then, of course, down here, Friends of the Guadalajara River. And then we're at Foggers. So are you going to be cautious about the links? Again, this is a, a representative public site. And um, ask the question about uh, presenting links to other entities in the community uh, in manners that are as neutral as we can get them, or at least aligned clearly with uh, public mission. Mm -hmm. So I <clears throat> I have a lot of respect for Fogger. It's a great organization in many respects. My opinion is not held by everyone here. It is not a public. So we just let's, we should think about it. again. I'm mm -hmm. glad you did this because it provokes a comment that's important. This is a public website hosted by a public entity, and we have to be cognizant of um, overlap with non-publics, commercial, private. What you'll see frequently on public websites is uh, a lot of discipline related to connections with or portaling into other publics that have related mission, um, other agent other commissions, other again public uh, entities, and not a lot of upfront or highly overt references to non-public entities, even if mission overlaps. It's an unusual situation, for example, why on a public site that fairly early on sends the viewer to a nonprofit. Just a, a cautionary note. Robert, right, well, they, oh, hang on. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Robert. How about a link to specific assembly candidates we don't we don't want to appear to have any endorsement okay. of anything yeah that's a more of a question this, yeah. that's with man more of a joke though yeah, no, no no but but it's, it's not our role is it is it huh? gmax role is no i that? wouldn't think we could unless we did no. all candidates then it would be a fair thing right but even then i don't think that's our argument it, yeah. it's not a role and i'm just it, it is, kind of throwing it out there as a joke that's, that's a good no that's a good point i think one of the things that we have to be very cognizant of and dave and robert both alluded to it is we don't want to appear that we're endorsing any product or service it's dangerous uh, or well, a particular perspective or other than yeah. that of a public entity mm -hmm. yeah uh, we have to be very very neutral Henry? Yeah, I mean, uh, to second what David was saying, I also think uh, Fogger is, um, in, at least in part, an advocacy organization. Uh, is by, uh, unless I'm missing something, I think they also do advocacy specifically with Mencian County. Mm -hmm. uh, that feels like we should stay very far away from um, any appearance of endorsement of something that advocates with Mencian County. Um, mm -hmm. If I were on the Board of Supervisors, which we are an extension of, I would be annoyed right. um, if we were endorsing um, an advocacy organization that is bugging them no matter how you know, positive the mission. 
Con conversely, though, links to the California Commission site, California Coastal Commission site, Mendocino County Building and Planning site would not be something you, you would be something you could do. Yeah. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, what, about about needs? what about these? Sure. Yeah, they're they're all, all, they're all, these are all publics. Yeah. They're public yeah. entities. So that's the easiest place to draw the line is public, non public. Sure. We may get to a point of sophistication where we're able to promote non publics. But the population gets so big so quickly, and it's a very dynamic universe out there on the other side of the public line, on the, on the non-public line. Yeah, it, we're not, I, I don't think we're going to get there, at least in the initial iterations of, of this evolution. But promoting the publics, particularly those that have a mm -hmm. footprint here on either side of the, of the river. So I'd, I'd feel comfortable, for example, going into Sonoma County and having a link to the regional parks mm -hmm. or... So to uh, to their fire department, right? But yeah. not to the Sea Ranch. Yeah. Not to the Sea Ranch. It's not a public. We don't. You know, we don't have. We don't have a. We got a, a voter hook there. And not, anyway. and not a link to their golf course or you know or their so private. Yeah. Yeah. It's just what 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 I'm trying to suggest is we avoid is a really deep and kind of soily rabbit hole, um, that once we step past the non into the non public realm for. Any good reason, we it's really difficult to stay at the top of the hole or at the top of the slope, however right. you want, whatever metaphor you want to use. So at least for the initial iteration, iterations for this, and this you're going to go through a bunch of them. Yeah, let's do our best grab of the publics that have sure. direct relevance here that influence our work or we're working with, or that have that make a really big difference here for people. Yeah, well, uh, very good, uh, and, good uh, comments, and I'm actually I'm glad I put Father up. Yeah, anything more I that provokes? Exactly. Uh, yeah, I guess I mean I have one, I've I've one other thing, but but I mean, we don't need to belabor it. Which is just if I'm thinking about who I think is going to go to the GMAC website, I think primarily it's going to be residents, and I feel like occupying so much of the homepage with what is essentially sort of like a you know not exactly like a tourism website but sort of like that just but like i feel like highlighting more gmac meetings public reports like updates and key community services like that to me feels like the primary audience mm -hmm. for a gmac website uh, certainly would not be as pretty as what you've done which is great i just i don't i don't know that that's really the people who are going to this is my two cents. Mm -hmm. Melissa, mm -hmm. do you have anything before Don moves on? I would say that the addition of the photographs would definitely make it more appealing to mm -hmm. go to that website and look at it, especially with all the photographs you take that are so wonderful. They, they can change regularly, perhaps, but not often. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Biannually. Whatever makes you happy. And we, we could even invite uh, participation. Uh, if somebody wants to submit a photo, we could display that photo. As far yeah, as I'm concerned. We might go into copyright issues there. If they're all yours, we're we'll saying for copyright issues. Mm -hmm. If they put their picture there, they might. No, no. If they, if they release it, well, if they release it, they make it available to us. Then it's not. I'm not using it without their permission. Okay, I was thinking that they no, 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 no. Yeah. Okay, David. And then Quick suggestion. Don. Yeah, and Don, I this is this is a really provocative presentation, and I know you want to get through it. I'd like to recommend because this is a very rich topic, and it's clear that you have all kinds of uh, partners who want to step into the kitchen with you. Um, I would recommend that we convene a special session to grapple with design. You know, you've got the goals down really well, but I think it's going to take conversation amongst the council to give you um, enough feedback where you have you're operating in high level of confidence with you know minimal wheel spin. And I think a, a work session would be one way to just have a focused and fairly freewheeling conversation. You should be ready to facilitate it. You know, do the functional requirements, you know, work through programming that you need in a structured way. Otherwise, we could probably talk about this for a very long time and enjoy it. Right. But it wouldn't necessarily productive use of your time. 
Um, let me piggyback that as well. This is such an excellent presentation and to piggyback what David said, I think this is something that needs to be agendized for the public to see. Because I think you've put together something really nice and I would love to have the public's comment on it, not just us. Um, so what's your thought? Should we bring this back and do it as a special meeting where we're launching this branding of a rebranding of GMAC or whatever uh, we want to label it and let you do this presentation and invite the public to give their input, especially these entities here. Mm -hmm. I'd love their input as well. Yeah, what, well, what's your thought? If if we want to do that, you're talking about something outside of a normal GMAC meeting. Yeah, just right? a special meeting like we had with the bylaws. We could just say we're having a special meeting to launch the branding of uh, our information service to the community. And we're inviting public comment. And then you could do your presentation. We could solicit the public's comment. And that, I think, would give you and anybody else on your committee some direction to move forward. Mm -hmm. What do you think? If, if people are willing to do that, um, attend a, a special meeting. I think they fine. would. That's fine with me. I think we um, would extend an invitation to everybody that you have a picture up there. And a, yeah, among others. Among others, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Are Although you really, really, uh, all we're doing here, I mean, yeah, the amount of information that we need to provide on the website is minimal for these groups, right? Because you know, we just they just click the button, they go to the website, right? You know, so okay, we let them explain themselves, sure, but okay. we we make it really easy for people to see this, see these services available, and get to the website. Yeah, the, the, the outreach for the other entities we'd want to link here might just be direct correspondence with them. Hey, RCMS, do you want to have a link? Do you want us to link to your website? Do you want us to be a portal to, to people to find you? Do South that, Coast Fire, would you do they have to give us permission for that? I they they don't. It's a public, it's a public a, website. I think it's, that's it's out of courtesy. courtesy. It's totally public. It, it is. You're right. We don't have to ask for permission. On the other hand, it might be a courteous thing to do. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, as a secretary, if you were to give me the list, of the agencies that you want to run up here, mm -hmm. I'll take care of the correspondence. No guarantee that we'll get a response, but from a courtesy standpoint, I would recommend and I'm going to share that service. I'll do the correspondence for you. You don't have to deal with that. You've right. got enough on your hands. Okay, fine. Well, in that case, uh, I don't want to be necessarily responsible for coming up with a list of these groups. I mean, okay. that's something else we can workshop. Well, um, yeah. We can workshop it. Yeah. Throw it on the list. I mean, you know, there aren't that many. But there are a number. Do you want to miss any? Well, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead and finish your presentation. And then my thought is when you're far enough down the road that you want to go public with it, uh, let the council know. And then we could do a special meeting if you'd like. Okay. Well, for a special meeting, I'd want the there to be more development on the website. Right. So more pages. Exactly. Uh, of at least some basic information to give an idea of uh, how this page would be used because sure. there, there are quite a few pages. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't mean to interrupt your presentation. Yeah, you know, go. Okay, so meetings. Well, meetings, this is mostly just going to be meeting announcements, but so there's nothing there now. Okay. Except a little test post. Um, and then there's archives. So we can change uh, the category that a meeting is posted at to archives and then it moves over into archives. So the, the meeting notices don't have to stretch on for years and years and years. News, I was just thinking, well, in order to attract people to our website, to mm -hmm. hopefully get them more involved in GMAC matters and other matters, mm -hmm. uh, maybe post some news, community news, basically. This this page will be much more developed. This is just the first little That's fine. Uh, section that I put in here. County government. There's going to be a lot more here. You're going to need government. a new picture, too. I'm sorry? You're going to need a new picture, too. You will need a new picture as well. 
Yeah, uh, two, two of those, two of those not, people not aren't returning, so yeah. What, oh, right, eventually we'll need a new picture, right. but this is still valid today. Yeah. Um, Are you thinking about GMAC yeah. member pictures too? <laughs> Oh, uh, oh, we oh. could, yeah. I'm thinking, yeah, we should have a group picture. Uh, not necessarily, <laughs> but <I'm still> <laughs> I just now you're kind of close to home. Yeah. There's planning and building services. I'll put something there. Planning commission. There's nothing there yet. Resources, oh. disaster preparedness guys. Nice. Hey, great. This I is like that. We did. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's this is all on your side. Is it on your your machine? Yeah, I've got that web server running. Okay, popped up, popped up fast. It's great. But the site should the new site should run faster than our old. Our old site is really slow. Yeah, it's terrible. So when we if we do a workshop again, focused on this on the design of the page, can we talk about? You know, there's there's some basic architecture going on here. Right. Basic philosophy and then architecture that plays that philosophy out. On the landscape of the, of the page, and there's, right, I'm going to look to you to, to you know, help me understand. You know, what's modern today? Henry, too, you guys are both at the, you know, cutting edge of this stuff. But I'd like to be able to talk about you know, what these menu items are. They don't have to necessarily be these, but they're some of the primary. Both we want to come on as a leader, you know, or one of the menu items. I don't know. This. So they call that a nav navigation menu. Yeah. Okay. Correct. What should these, what should, what should our primary look high be? Mm -hmm. uh, you might have one, you got county government, it could also just be government. And then True. that play out. Or it might be, uh, instead of climate, it could be celebrate the law, or whatever. It could be something that kind of opens up this notion of physiography. Uh, meetings, that's one. News, I don't know what's right about that. But the point is that we have a conversation. What are we trying to do in this? What are our primary bundles of information that are easily navigable, basic person moving in the right direction? Mm -hmm. On you know the landing page, what does that look like? How complex or simple is it going to be? Is it going to be really most of imagery and a view? Small bits of words here and there, so that it tends to draw the person to the next, you know, kind of clickbait to the next thing, or do you want to actually load up a bunch of stuff on that arrival? So if it's that type of help the council understand what your design philosophy is, the tools that you would deploy on the page, I think that will help us interact with you setting, you know, organizing and setting content. And once we get into any one of these, that we can, we'll have this progression of more of a specific inventory detail that will hopefully be useful to you and putting stuff together sure. with minimal. Iterations on content. Yeah. Well, uh, the whole design philosophy revolves around the theme that I've chosen and that we're going to stick with. Okay. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's it's gotten fantastic reviews. It's the, it's the theme put out by WordPress. There are thousands of themes. Okay. And no I'm way in the world. I'm going to go through them. Wherever you want to go with this. So. I'm sticking with <laughs> the latest theme that WordPress mm -hmm. put out themselves, the company WordPress. Yeah, great. Nice. So it's been well and, vetted and stable. Yeah. They like did it. this theme. They're not a third party. And cool. This is, it's, it's like, you know, getting a Apple computer and running Apple software. And it runs great, like it's without any problems. Yeah. Normally. Uh, so I, I'm not going to entertain myself since I'm doing this. A switch from the theme that we're using. Okay. But the theme can be, you know, components of the theme can be rearranged and you know the elements can be modified. You know, so there's a lot of flexibility here, in fact. Uh, colors can be changed, uh, typography can be changed. So that a lot of these elements are changeable within the framework of the overall theme. So, okay. As long as we're okay with, you know, using the tools that I've selected, um, this looks like a very really effective did. approach. I think you've done a great job. Yeah, looks okay. good. So, in terms of 
pictures. I know you won't like this, Henry, but there's yeah. be, there's even a gallery here, I, a gallery feature. I think that's great. I have no objection to having to having the gallery. It's just about what's on the front page, but I can check out that picture. That's pretty cool. That's picture. awesome. That's one of yours. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. That was that thing two years ago. Hmm. It's still good. No, I want to again uh, kind of echo Henry's comment. <laughs> On arrival, it should be fairly straightforward and really simple. Yeah, because what my experience is more than late, more late than not. But again, dealing with a lot of information rich websites is that complex arrivals tend to scare people off unless they really have an incentive to go dig. And that again, it's it's been an Achilles heel in you know, on the internet and the web web production for a long time. Largely driven, I think, by scarcity. And nowadays we have less scarcity with respect to speed and data. So I think now we can step back and be a, a lot more artful. And I'm not saying art as in you know cute dressy shit and staying art in terms of intent, thoughtfulness, and strategic um, approach to the user's reaction to what they find. Um, these are great, and there's a place for them, and we should yeah. do that. Because somebody's going to, a lot of people are going to enjoy this, but not on arrival. On arrival, it's real well, simple. Well, why? Well, what do you mean not on arrival? This is easy to do. I'm sorry. The, the this user is, first this... accesses the GMAC homepage. When they arrive at that, oh, of course. It's not, this is not on the home page. Right. This is a gallery. Yeah. Going to the gallery navigation Got page. It. This is a separate page. You yeah, have to actually great. navigate to get here. Good. Just great. So, okay. Yeah. Um, I would like to request that the, the council, we've got a lot of comments on this. I guess first I'd like to have Don finish his presentation. Um, and then I'd like to hear the council's direction because we have a lot of excellent input. And I think that we all really want to kind of digest this and sure. give a good, concise input. Um, so is there more for you on your presentation? If not, I'd like mm -hmm. to hear from the council as far as our direction. Where do we want to go? No, I think I'm, I'm done. You know, basically okay. giving you a first look at what a redesigned website, you know, could look like. Okay. Um, um, which which was my goal. And I know that the ultimate product is going to be different. Sure. But uh, from a, a theme and a uh, sort of design standpoint, you know, these are the tools that we're using. Great. Robert, do you have any input guidance? Um, only that the reason why this was created back when Don, the jurisdictional map on the homepage was, you know, information wise, just to show roughly where the um, boundaries were of the GMAC. And then that? that was based upon the. Yeah. That's even better. That shows it even better. Nice. Okay. That's what I was going to say is this didn't do it because it didn't show the whole area. <laughs> That shows, uh, well, it still doesn't show it quite all no, the way, but well, it's- that, That's the same image. I just took the image file off of our existing website, because that's- Really? That's, I see Island Cove Estates up there. We can come up with a better image to use, then we can use that. But I, was I just learning. grabbed this, this is just what we've been oh. using. I just, this to me was a terrible yeah. landing page. It, it is kind of, it, yeah, but... it was terrible. Yeah. Wow. But the way the first time they designed that web, web page or that uh, website, I didn't know how to really change that. And I wasn't going to get into it. Right. I didn't want to break the website. Yeah. Well, here I'm starting from scratch, a clean slate. You know, I know exactly how things are put together. So yeah, certain elements I just grabbed from our existing website. And so we'll look, we'll look at the, we'll including the course, look at the this map. little logo, the GMAC logo. I just grabbed it from our website. Mm -hmm. Good. The only thing um, you might change on that is they've been advising the counties uh, well before 2005, if I'm not mistaken. Just just a date change. 
Well, yeah, that's I just I just I didn't know what the next thing was. I just threw that in. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> see, it's really hard to resist. See, okay. and I'll I'll reprint. Dave, do you have anything that? No, this, to is, add? this is great. Thanks so much, Don. Henry. Nope. No, nothing further. Melissa. That's a really good. That's much better than the map that yeah. comes with um... the current yeah. website. Yeah. This thing. Exhibit A. <laughs> okay, so Don, that looks great. If, if I if I hear the council correctly, go ahead and um, if there's any more adjustments you want to do on this, great. If you want to have a special meeting, let me know, and we'll have a special meeting to discuss more of this. But we'll put it in, in your court. You let us know when you're comfortable. Uh, after all your tweaking and massaging and everything with it then we'd love to sit down with you and give our input. Yeah. Okay. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, sure. I mean, to a certain extent, it needs to be a collaborative project. Exactly. But on the other hand, the designing the website by committee, I'm not sure that's the greatest. Approach. No, I, I think you, you're taking the lead on it. We'll just provide him. Um, any other committee reports that I may have missed that anybody feels compelled to share information on? Hearing none, uh, we'll go to item 10, which is our treasurer's report. We have no report because our treasurer's not here. Our next item, item 11, is a closed session. Um, exposure, potential exposure to conflict of interest. At this time, uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn the regular meeting and adjourn the adjourn to the uh, closed session. Do we have a motion? Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, could you explain what the nature of that conflict of interest is? Can you offer up who the parties to the conflict are and how GMAC is Impacting not not at this time, but what we will do is if there is any action after our closed session, then we will report. We will go back into a regular session and we report the particulars with our action. But as far as the discussion right now on that, what the particulars are, no, we don't have any more information than this right now. Thank you. Uh, is, is there, since we're going to adjourn to closed session, Turn off the Zoom. And, I can pause you know, it. Yeah. Uh, we can so, we'll pause we'll, the recording. Yeah. We so the recording it. will come back up. So if you want to see what we report out, if anything, from the closed yeah. session, um, you can go to the Zoom or you can hang around. We can shout out the door if you want when we're done. Uh, although so, it'll be recorded as well. Okay. So do we have um, a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn to closed session. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Second by Dave. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I'm sorry, John, did you have a comment? No. Do you, do you want us to shut out the door when we're done with closed session? Sure. So we're closing. Okay, we are readjourning our regular meeting at 9 or 8.47. Uh, we do have reportable action that uh, we are compelled to and obligated to report. Um, on our streetscape project, uh, we have a change in the membership of that committee. Robert Youngling is no longer on the streetscape project and he's being replaced by uh, Dave Spock. And the other two members of Henry Mayer and Melissa Finley will retain their positions on the streetscape project as well. And that is effective as of tonight. Does that forbid Robert to talk about the streetscape at all? Ro Robert is recused. Point of order. Oh, member of the public, I don't believe is permitted to talk at this point. This is not a wait. Well, it we can open it up for public comment. Yeah, but you have to. Okay, as chair. Then um, you can't chair sorry. The bar Good point. Chair. Okay, um, we reported the action. We'll open it up for public comment. Do you have further to report? 
Uh, not at this time. Other other than uh, Robert, <clears throat> because of a conflict of interest, Robert will be recusing himself from all discussions regarding the streetscape project. That includes letters and other. He will. He will be. I can still do what I want as this private citizen. I would think. Yeah. Until... So, yeah. What is this conflict of interest about? What's the nature of it? Um, the con the conflict of interest is a directive that came from county council on an inquiry that we had regarding participation, and county council rendered an, a decision on that, and we are following the direction of county council uh, as far as the appropriate action to take, and that would be to require uh, our member to recuse himself. From all all participation in the streetscape, Henry. Well, uh, point of order: it's, we've reported out the option. I don't think we need to have a discussion about it. That's why we have a closed session. Right. So what was the county council's um, decision? I know. I know. Pardon me. Yeah, no, it's, I don't think it's appropriate. It's no. Appropriate. No. That's why we had a closed session. But we're we're what we're doing is we're we're reporting that the action taken that uh, Robert is no longer on the committee and has to recuse himself from all participation in the streetscape project based on a conflict of interest. Well, my real question is, what about all the comments and letters and stuff that he's written in the past that were? Force the streetscape to do a certain pattern, yeah. right? And this just doesn't look. It looks. We find it more. Right. Out the this is, is, right. Yeah. This is beyond what we need to so, do. So yeah, this is uh, not a, not a discussion item. It's not an agendized item. It's a reporting out of our closed session. Um, so your report is simply that he's not able to participate in the committee. He's no member of the committee. Um, street state, state. I'm no longer on the street and no longer and no longer participate as a council member during any discussion of the streetscape project because of the conflict of interest. Correct. That he has with the street state in particular. Correct. Okay. Too bad it didn't come out years ago. Okay. Um. On to item twelve. Any new business? None. Any council member comments? Um, I just have one and I guess I would like to thank South Coast Fire District for providing a great venue for the Lions Club to have their crab feet uh, this past weekend and uh, was very well attended by the community. And we appreciate the support from the businesses in that in that venture. So uh, that's my comment. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn this meeting until the March 7th, 2024 meeting at six o'clock at the Coast Life Support Building, 38901 Ocean Drive, Wallala. We have a motion by Melissa, second, second by Henry. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Where we stand adjourned. Thank <clears throat> you.